do what you wanna do. Grant Boulay of the Forensic Identification Section here at the Bevel City Police. I'm the officer in charge. Um, basically, forensics is the use of science in solving crime. And there's many different um, components. It's either you could use fingerprints, uh, footwear, tire track, blood stain, and there's many other disciplines uh, that follow in forensics. Uh, forensics have been used for, for many years in uh, in policing, it's just been in the last 10 years, it seems that it's come to the limelight with all the, the TV shows. Um, it, it has been beneficial and it also hasn't in some degree. Uh, everybody wants a forensics to solve their cases uh, and um, it's not as easy as one thinks it can be. The forensic identification section is comprised of three forensic identification officers, myself and two others and a fingerprint technician. As well on the, the road are four scenes of crime officers. Their short form is a, is a SOCO. Their role is to collect evidence from um, minor crime scenes such as break and enters or photographs for assaults, um, photographs of, of damage uh, uh, in traffic accidents. So the attendance uh, of a police officer at a break and enter would start or initiate the process for an ident or an ident officer or a SOCO to attend. Basically they will assess um, and see if there's possibility of forensic evidence at the crime scene and if there is a, a phone call is made for a SOCO or an ident officer to attend. Uh, once we attend a scene we start um, processing the scene as looking for evidence that may lead us to the scene, footwear, tire track, anything that may have been dropped by a, a perpetrator. Uh, and then we look at point of attacks or areas within a scene where they have entered a uh, smashed door, uh, pry marks, uh, forced a window open. So we're looking for trace evidence there. We may use uh, fingerprint powders. Um, was the person smoking? Did they, they drop a cigarette, may have left a, a cigarette butt? And then once we're in a scene, then what did they go and touch? So could they have left fingerprints somewhere, um, footwear impressions? So we're basically looking for any type of trace evidence uh, at a scene that will assist in, in solving the crime. Evidence at a crime scene is very neutral. There's no pre-misconceptions. We just have the evidence, and where that evidence leads um, dictates for us what we provide the investigator. We provide a set of facts that is, is built on, on the science of either footwear, fingerprints, at a, at a major scene it might be a component of blood stain, um, analysis, uh, tire track, shooting reconstruction, or, or DNA. So wherever that evidence leads us to is what we provide the investigator. What he does with that is, along with his investigation, um, it may exonerate somebody or lead them in a different direction. Okay, look straight ahead, camera. One, two, forensics three. ever lie? Um, right. Forensics can be manipulated in regards to if someone wants to fake a scene and with all the shows on TV now with uh, CSI and all this, there's a bunch of them um, bad guys are getting smarter and they're able to manipulate a scene or try to manipulate a scene and then forensics uh, again you know there's many dis disciplines footwear tire track fingerprint fingerprints blood stain um, Humans, uh, humans uh, have to 
assess the evidence so it doesn't lie. This is a cyanacrylate chamber, common name is blue chamber, and it's where we blue fume an item and with the hopes that fingerprints that are deposited on an item will be uh, made visible. So the pop cam was handled at the crime scene and then we're going to bring it over and we're going to dust it with a fluorescent powder to see if we can get it to uh, show us where the fingerprints are. Use this as a feather duster I just apply a bit of the powder. This is a fine powder that's um, used to dust for fingerprints. In this case we have a fingerprints on a pop can. And the purpose of using a fluorescent powder is that we can use fluorescent light source to uh, create contrast between the, the shiny can and where the fingerprints are developed on the can. There's no, I don't think there's a, no such thing as a perfect crime scene, but we're lucky that bad guys sometimes aren't that smart and they leave a lot of evidence behind. Um, we work under the, the premise that, I mean, it's called the low card principle, that every contact leaves a trace. So either you take something away from the scene or you bring something to the scene. So there's always a, cr you know, and can, is there enough evidence there to interpret what you've left or what you've taken away? So that some, sometimes there, there isn't enough evidence to be able to interpret it, but the premise is that every contact leaves a trace. So we go to a scene in, in the, on that premise that we are going to find some evidence. Prior to becoming a police officer, I also was involved in photography. So that was my first initiation when I was in policing to um, a side of, of forensics because obviously the forensic identification section used cameras. Yeah. So I, I ended up um, having an interest and then when I realized how important forensics is in a case and how it speaks to direct evidence and the, you know, Sometimes witnesses don't tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth and uh, but the forensics usually tell tell you what occurred at a scene and can help help with help with what witnesses do tell you either corroborate what they say or or negate what they say so it helps in that regards it helps the investigators um, with what occurred at a scene and when they go to interview it, it may help them as well. So um, that's kind of what got me interested and an opportunity came forward and uh, the rest is history really. I've been in uh, forensics for since 1991. And this program is called uh, CSI Pix Comparator and what we do with that is you can load images, you can load a left image and a right image for comparison purposes. So the image on the left here was taken from a crime scene it's a partial print, and they always have a scale in with it. Everything we do is scaled. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you take that one. Our unknown is always on the left, so we give it an, an R number. depends on how many fingerprints you got. If we have a suspect, we can compare it with the suspect's prints. In this incident, we did have one. So we looked at his prints, and that becomes our right image. Once we bring that up, we've got to scale it so that they're the same size for comparison purposes. Now this program, you can zoom in and out as well, move things around and you can lock it. But then it has a, a feature where you, pick, you can pick out characteristics and annotate what they are. So on the right screen, we have the footwear impression that was just lifted from the crime scene. That's been inverted to be laterally correct. On the left side is the test impression taken from the suspect's footwear uh, that he was arrested with. And at this point we would do a cross comparison between the two to uh, look for details that are similar to uh, either give support or, or lack of support for uh, that the shoe made the impression. So is, is forensic evidence positively going to solve your crime? No. Um, someone may have been legitimately at a house or at a business and left their fingerprint there or their footwear there. Um, so we may find their fingerprint and it doesn't mean that they 
create. You know, they, it doesn't mean that they they uh, did that offense. So the investigators have to follow up on: Did that person have legitimate access to that residence or that business in the last while? Uh, fingerprints are not. You can't date fingerprints. Um, when was that fingerprint left there? We can only say that that fingerprint is there. We can't say that that fingerprint was left there. It's a fresh fingerprint that was left, left there yesterday. Um, and that comes to witnesses again, where the, uh, if this table was washed the night before, well, the chances of the fingerprint being left there from the night before, you know, is almost nil. This uh, piece of paper we got from the Cavell Builder break and enter. Uh, the suspect handled the piece of paper, so we brought it back to the station, processed it with a chemical reagent called indane dion, and after the processing with that, you have to put it in a cabinet for about 10 minutes, uh, 100 degrees, 70% humidity, and it brings up the fingerprint impression. Now the indane dion. You can see it here, normally it comes up a lighter yellow color, but it will fluoresce under a green light, which uh, brings it up again as well. These are pretty good for not being under uh, any other light other than white light. The uh, identification section is a support unit for many areas within the police service, whether it's the officers on the road, um, the criminal investigation bureau, the traffic unit. We are a component. and. Sometimes we're a, a, a large component of a case. Sometimes we offer a little bit of a component or a little, little bit of ev evidence to the scene.